In this lesson, we're going to go over the mean, the mode, the median, and other statistical values for grouped data and frequency charts. And I'm going to show you the first example using just numbers and show you where the Greek letters come into play. So by the second example, I'll ask the question using the Greek symbols and you'll know exactly what to do. If you haven't already, please take a second and subscribe to this channel. And thank you for watching. Let's begin now on MathCat. Three, two, one. Here we have a frequency distribution where we have intervals of different sizes. In other words, 0 to 1 has two numbers in it, but 11 to 26 has 15 numbers in it, and the number of data points in each category. And what we want to find are the statistical measurements, the mode, the median, the first and third quartiles, the range, and the mean or average. So let's go through each one of these. The mode is similar to finding a mode of single data points. We're looking for the modal category, the category with the most data points in it. And in this case, if you look down through, you'll find 40 data points in this category. So 42 to 46 would be the answer, the name of the category. Now let's suppose there were two categories that had 40 in it. Let's say this one had 40 and this one had 40. You would put none for mode. If there isn't one unique answer, then there is no mode. So you would just write none. But in this case, there's only one. So we write down that range. The median. Now notice I've already laid out these categories in numerical order, starting with 0 and going up to 61. If for some reason you encountered a chart where it wasn't in numerical order, 0 to 1 was here, and 47 to 61 was next, and 11 to 26, you'd have to straighten all the categories out and put them in numerical order. But once you've done that, you can find the median. And we first need to know the total number of data points, and then we're going to look for the data point that's halfway. So the easiest way to find the total number of data points is to create another column called cumulative frequency. And in this column, as we go down, we're going to add up all the data points. So we're going to start with our 13 in the first category and add to it the 14 in the next category and write the sum here, 27. Then we're going to take our 27 and add the 30 and come up with 57. Take the 57 and add 12. Up to here we have 69 data points for a total of 147 data points. So that's our total. Now we have to find halfway, and that will be our median. Now we have to find half, then we have to find half, then we have to find halfway, and that will be our median category. So the way we do that is we take the number of data points and add one to it and divide it by two. So in this case, we have 147 data points. Add one and divide by two. So that's 148 divided by two, which is 74. So the 74th data point is the median. And now we have to find which category contains the 74th data point. So we use our cumulative frequency, and we're looking for the 74th data point. Well, there's 13 by the end of this category, and 27 by the end of this category, and 57 by the end of this category, and 69 by the end of this category, and here we have 80 by the end of this category. So the 74th data point is in this category. So it would be 27 to 28. Now finding the first quartile is similar. We take our n plus 1, but this time divide it by 4 because we want 1 fourth of the way instead of 1 half of the way. So that's 147 total data points plus 1 divided by 4, which is 148 divided by 4. So our first quartile is the one that contains the 37th data point. So we look down our list. 27 ends here and 57 ends here, so the 37th data point is in this category 7 to 10. The third quartile is found in a similar way, except this time we want 3 fourths of the way, n plus 1, or 3 fourths of 147 plus 1, which is 3 fourths of 148, which is 111. So we want to know which category contains the 111th data point. And we'll look down our cumulative frequency list. 105 ends here, so the 111th data point would be in this category, 42 to 46. To find the range, it's usually just the largest number minus the smallest number. However, we're dealing with ranges within our categories. So our biggest number that we have is 61, and the smallest number we have is 0. So let's start there. 61 minus 0 is 61, but if these two data points happen to be at the lower end, or if they were 47, and these 13 data points were at the higher end, if they were all 1s, then our range would be 47 minus 1, or 46. So our range actually has a minimum and a maximum, and we could write that down. Now we have to find our average of all the data points, and the first thing we notice 
is that we don't know what the value is for these 13. Is it zero? Is it one? We don't know the value of these 27 data points. It could be anywhere between two and six. So the way we calculate the average in this case is we find the midpoint for each interval, multiply it by the number in that interval, and that gives us a value for each category, and then we take the average of those. So we need a couple more columns. The first one is the midpoint column. And now we're gonna average each interval. And the way we do that is add them up and divide by two. So one plus zero divided by two is one half, or 0.5. Six plus two is eight divided by two is four. So the midpoint of this interval is four. 10 plus seven, 17 divided by two, 8.5. And 61 plus 47 is 108 divided by 2 is 54. So in order to be careful not to use the cumulative frequency in the next step, I put a line through all these numbers. We want to now multiply the frequency times the midpoint to get a value for each category. So we're going to be multiplying, I'll put an F here and an X here. We're going to be multiplying F times X, the value for each category. So 13 times 0.5 is 6.5, 14 times 4 is 16, 30 times 8.5 is 255, and 54 times 2 is 108. So the sum of this column is 3,545, and that can be written with a sigma, which means summation f times x. So the mean, or x bar, is going to be 3545 divided by the number of data points, 147, or 24.12. And that's how we find these statistical numbers for a frequency distribution. This is typical of what you see when a problem says find the mean. It says find x bar for, and then it gives a summation of x times f over a summation of f. This is the capital letter sigma, and it means the sum. The sum of x times f over the sum of f, the frequency. A number of people were polled and asked how many siblings do you have, anywhere from zero to six. And this was the number that reported in each category. Nine said they had no siblings, 11 said they had one, seven had two, five people reported they had three, two said they had four, and one each for five siblings and six siblings. So x is the number of siblings, and the frequency are how many, and the frequency is how many people reported having this number of siblings. So to find the average number of siblings, let's first find the total frequency, or cumulative frequency, like we did before. We'll start out with our nine, add 11, be 20, plus seven is 27, 32, plus two is 34, plus one is 35, plus one, 36. So we have 36, so you could say 36 is the sum of all the frequencies. So we already know the bottom number. Now let's find the number of siblings times the frequency. Number of siblings times the frequency. So I'll call this x times f, and what I like to do is not use the cumulative frequency, but the single frequency. So number of siblings times the frequency. Zero times nine is zero. So there are no siblings in this group. 11 have one sibling. How many siblings is that? 11 times one is 11. Seven reported having two siblings. How many siblings? 14. And one times six siblings is six. And now we add all these numbers up. 25, 40, 8, 53, and six is 59, which is the sum of number of siblings times the frequency reported, sum of x times f. So the mean is 59 divided by 36, or exactly 1.64. But it would be more accurate to round this to a whole number since I don't know anybody with 0.64 siblings, the average number of siblings is two. So that's how you take the Greek symbols and a formula and do what we just did to find the mean for a frequency distribution.